Okay, so uh, there's an interesting question from John Furman. John, sorry, would you like to read it out, John? Uh, so yeah, I don't remember this. <coughs> yeah, you know. Uh, okay. Bright has been mentioned a couple of times, for example, of a green being in control. I wonder how things are done different there and what you think the lessons might be for Swindon. So if we alter in the running order, do you guys go net first this time? So, so I that's 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 we heard mentioned that the Greens are in control oh, right. of writing. Yes. Yeah. I, I wondered in your observations as to how they handle budget issues mm -hmm. there and what the lessons might be for Swindon. Can, um, can I just say I, I did a site visit to Brighton on Sunday when I ran the Brighton Marathon and I thought the Greens did very well there, very green. And I, you know, Unfortunately, they didn't make actually less than 26 miles, so I'm actually walking into terrible problems today. But Brighton, I just said that Brighton is a very interesting place, and actually very good because actually it's a, it combines a seaside attraction, and obviously they've thought about it, so they actually are thinking about actually things there. There's very good policies there in parking, these park and ride system, they use it for a, well for the race and various other aspects. So Brighton is a good example. I mean, we actually good examples around the country where actually you can see uh, different th theme has been, you know. We just look near, nearby as we turn to actually Bristol again. Uh, the Lib Dems have put a lot of the policies. So, but green actually is is on the agenda all through. If you look at everything we do now, there is green thought put into it. In terms of actually, we look at recycling in Swindon. Even you know, it's, it's a relatively good good result there. And I think every party now has an element of green because I think that's the way forward. We all know where that was actually recycling, energy conservation. We all know it, and I think we are actually coming into being. Um, I. I for example, I cycle to work um, every day, and I, and I think most people have their bikes stuck in the garage. Um, it really is trying to get people to to use those bikes, the idea of making it safe and easy to use. And again, the policies I've always tried to push actually is to get that happen. And now we are seeing it actually making safe provision for cycling from West Sydney into the town, in a sense. Actually lockable um, um, places to put your bike. So again, I think we're starting to reflect that. So I think the Green Party, if nothing else, has inspired everybody to start thinking about green issues. I think as all parties, I think we now know that's firmly on the agenda. And of course for Europe, it actually is, it's actually a second nature. It's, it's only in England we've come late. But I think we are coming in the right way. So I think it's firmly established itself. I mean, we always claim to be actually one of the greenest parties there is, but as politicians for you, isn't it? No. Um, I think that's true. We've always actually had the green agenda in, into mind. But no, I think everybody's now doing it. Okay, thank you, Stan. I'm not sure if that's the answer you were expecting, but, but, but when the purpose really of here is to hear people talk, so let's, I won't try and behave like what we've done. Um, Labour Party, do you want to nominate somebody, Andy, to answer this yeah, question? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to answer this question. I mean, I, I think, first of all, it's worth making a picture of what Labour Party's policy on this is in Swindon is that um, we're determined to place Swindon at the centre of the green economy. We're very lucky that Mark Dempsey, who's the um, shadow leader of the, 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 um, the Labour group, um, is an environmental consultant and he's put forward a, a detailed plan of how to attract green jobs to Swindon. Um, now, Brighton is interesting because this is a, a council where the Greens are in control. And I think, first of all, it's worth saying one thing that they've done really well with their budget. They consulted with the trade unions, they consulted with community groups, they discussed with people what their priorities were, um, and they fed all of that back in a, in a process into the political process, and I hope that that's something that Labour in Swindon will emulate, we're trying to make sure that the community is involved in the decisions we make. But I think it's also worth looking at the fact that one of the things that's interesting about Brighton is it shows what the reality of power is, because um, the Greens were elected promising no cuts, as Bill said earlier, and lots of um, big promises about being anti-capitalist and having a different agenda. But in actual fact, the Green Council this year uh, is implementing £35 million pounds worth of cuts in Brighton. Um, they've also cut Shore Start, which is provision for vulnerable um, children, uh, 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 um, basically is provision for all parents um, with young children, which is particularly focused uh, uh, <coughs> in need. They've cut the Shore Start scheme in favour of a vanity project of a five hundred thousand pound project per year for food recycling in the most middle class part of Brighton. Um, and also, it's due, partly due to its privatisation, but partly due to lack of council support, um, Brighton Pride, which is the biggest Pride event in Europe, may not be going ahead this year um, in Brighton under a Green Council. So I think 
What's interesting is that you know when you're actually talking about what powers a local council have really got, um, then we're all faced with difficult choices, and we're faced with the budget which government gives us. And um, I think that the, the lesson for that is that it's difficult, and that you do need to engage with the community, and you need to to, to engage and keep the trust of the voters. Thank you, Andy. Bill, this is a question for you. Yeah, I remember you you asking what what role the Green Party would be in a coalition. Is it? No, no, I said. Um, what are the lessons you think we could learn from Brighton, particularly in terms of dealing with the budget issues? Well, as, as, as Andy indicated, you know, there are, you know, we're against mass, massive um, uh, forces are going against us. Um, but where there's, where there's a determination, where there's strong support, you can get a lot of things through. Obviously, there's, there's problems with budget. That term, I think, these can be in the long term, and yet this can be overcome. I mean, I mean for example, um, in Oxford, the Green Party had a, a, a very strong influence, even though they never actually had a majority. They don't, they've had the control of Stroud Council. They've, um, they're the biggest party in Norwich. They've got members of the London Assembly. They've got Jenny Jones, the mayor, mayor of candidate probably neck and neck the Liberals at the moment. So the Greens are an increasing force. So the more the more support we get, the more councillors and MPs and so on we get, then we're gradually overcome these problems. But we can't really <coughs> help them a day. But hopefully, you know, we are building up strongly and, and we can um, you know, from our perspective we will try and make priorities. I don't want to, I don't want to cut you off. Start. I, don't, I don't want to get rid of the gay pride march. I mean, any of these things, of course, this is, this is very negative. But you know, I hope in the long run that we do get our, can get our priorities right. We can get this massive support and get the funding necessary for what is good. Thank you.